and welcome back to Voyage of a Time Wanderer. Today I am here to do the Mug Collection book tag. The premise for this tag is to take the different mugs that you have in your collection and pair them with a book recommendation that kind of ties into the theme or design of the mug. From what I can find, uh, this tag was originally created by the channel Olivia's Catastrophe, and I first saw it on the Personal Cozy Projects channel. So when I saw this type of video popping up in my subscription feed, I knew I had to do it during uh, the winter months because it's just such a cozy idea for a tag, and I didn't really realize before then what a great diversity I have in my mug collection. Uh, so I've pulled down my 10 mugs and I have a book that I think matches really well with each mug and I'm excited to share those. So the first mug that I'm going to share a book recommendation for is this one. This is like a tin uh, camping style mug. Um, it's got a Canada design, Canada 1867, True North Strong and Free which is a lyric from our national anthem. I got a pair of these mugs actually when a friend was moving overseas and she wasn't able to take everything with her. I really enjoy them particularly for drinking like cold drinks like a lemonade or something because I don't think obviously being tin I could microwave this and I'm prone to needing to microwave and reheat my tea and hot chocolate. So this mug I drink a lot out of during the summertime when I'm doing like a um, lemonade or an iced tea or something like that. But the book that I want to pair this mug with is The Blue Castle by Lucy Maud Montgomery. The Blue Castle is one of Montgomery's adult fiction novels and I think it is really underrated compared to her Anne series because I found it just as charming even though it is just a single book and not a series. There's not a whole lot that I can say about the plot without getting into spoilers, but uh, we're following Valency who is kind of trying to break free from her overbearing family. And the reason that I think it pairs well with this mug is twofold. First of all, because obviously this is a Canada mug and Montgomery is a Canadian author and this book is set in Ontario. But also because a large portion of this book takes place on a small forested island with a little cabin. And because this is a camping style mug, I thought it matched well with kind of that atmosphere of being alone camping out on an island in a rural area. Then the next mug that I want to talk about is this one that says wifey and has a blue inside. This is part of a pair that my aunt got my husband and I for one of our wedding anniversaries. So he has a hubby mug and I have a wifey mug. And the book that I want to pair this one with is A Common Life, A Wedding Story uh, by Jan Karen. This is a novella from her Mitford series uh, and it is all about uh, Father Tim and Cynthia finally getting married and telling the story of their wedding. The actual books in the series had skipped over the wedding so the book before had ended with uh, his proposal and then the third book in the series I think or the fourth book skipped straight into them being a married couple so we had missed out on kind of learning more about their wedding planning and what their actual special day was like. So this novella filled in the gaps there and it was just a really sweet story about a wedding and a husband and wife coming together. I think Father Tim and Cynthia have such a sweet relationship. I love how it's portrayed across all the books. I think it is got some uh, beautiful portrayals of marriage so that's the reason why I'm pairing that book with my wifey mug. Next I have this mug which is a Starbucks mug from London. It's kind of got a cityscape in silhouette all the way around. I love how it has like the little color for Big Ben and the phone booth. For this book of course I have to recommend the Sherlock Holmes series by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Uh, this mug, one of the reasons why I love it so much is that it really reminds me of the opening credits of the Sherlock TV show. That's the modern BBC adaptation of these stories and the opening credits for that kind of have a London skyline scene that includes a lot of uh, the same elements like uh, the London Eye. So when I saw this mug in the Heathrow airport I was like oh my goodness that reminds me so much of Sherlock and it's one of my all-time favorite mugs because it's quite large like you can see it's a it's a hefty a hefty drink and obviously the Sherlock Holmes series I think are kind of the quintessential London story they're very anchored in their setting and whenever I reread the short stories in these collections I always feel like I am participating in the sleuthing myself uh, walking the foggy streets of London so I think uh, this is the perfect combination of book and mug 
Then my next mug is this one from Malawi. It says Malawi on it and it has some African cichlids. It's like a pottery mug. I love how it feels in your hand. The way it's uh, curved makes it fit perfectly. I love this one especially for like a mint tea in the evening or uh, like a honey and lemon water in the morning because it's so sturdy that even if you're kind of sleepy uh, you won't drop it or get it knocked out of your hand very easily. Uh, I really love that it has the African cichlids on it because when I was little we raised African cichlids so that was kind of a fun connection and Lake Malawi is one of the few places in the world where they are found wild. For this mug I'm going to pair it with poetry collections by a Malawian author Jack Mapanja. He is a university professor in English and the first poetry collection he published of chameleons and gods uh, included some poetry that was critical of the current government and so he actually ended up being a political prisoner of conscience uh, for almost four years uh, because he was critical of the current president. The collection that I'm currently reading from him is called Greetings from Grandpa and it includes some of his thoughts kind of as he ages and becomes a grandfather, uh, some of his thoughts on current political issues as well as what it's like to live in the African diaspora abroad. My next mug is another one from the Starbucks City Collections and that is from Edinburgh. So we have the Edinburgh Castle on the front and then on the back it's kind of again a city skyline. I think this is the Sir Walter Scott Memorial or maybe this one is. Um, I got this as a souvenir when I was uh, in Edinburgh and the book that I'm going to pair it with is Coffin Road by Peter May. This is a standalone novel by my favourite Scottish mystery author. When I was in Scotland, Peter May's books were everywhere, like every gift store you went into had Peter May books on display, particularly in the Outer Hebrides. Uh, a lot of his books take place on the Isles of Lewis and Harris, so when we were in that area um, there was, I think, a lot of local pride in being featured in his books. Coffin Road is one of his standalone novels, and the narrative is split between Edinburgh, which is why I'm pairing it with this uh, mug, as well as the Isle of Harris. We're following a few different perspectives, including a teenage girl growing up in Edinburgh. Her father had uh, died by suicide a few years ago, but she thinks there must be more to the story, so she's trying to investigate uh, to learn more about the truth uh, around his death. We have a man who washes up on the shores of the Isle of Harris and has no memory of who he is or how he got there. And then uh, the detective that's trying to kind of piece everything together. And it's a really interesting novel because in addition to having, I guess, all of your traditional thriller mystery elements, it also has as a major plot point uh, the kind of current controversy around the use of neonex in farming and how that may or may not be leading towards bee colony collapse. So that is kind of the scientific issue that this girl's father was researching at the time of his death. So it was neat kind of to have that current issue in the world brought in as one of the main topics of the mystery. The next mug in my collection is this one that has a bunch of uh, Converse sneakers on it. And when I was in high school I absolutely loved Converse sneakers. I had a couple pairs and that was pretty much the only shoes that I wore like year round. So for my pairing with this mug, I had to throw it back to one of my favorite uh, authors and favorite books in high school, and that is The Year of Secret Assignments by Jacqueline Moriarty. Besides being a book that I really enjoyed in high school, this is also set in a high school setting, so I thought it matched really well uh, with my Converse mug. The basic premise of this book is that there are two different rival high schools that are paired up in a pen pal program, and so we are following um, a couple different high school students as they write letters back and forth with their secret pen pals and then of course there's lots of teenage drama that ensues. The next mug in my collection is this one which is ocean themed. It's got lots of different uh, seashells on it and then my favorite part is that on the inside here it's got a starfish stamp. My mom gave me this mug when I moved away from home for the first time because I was leaving behind the ocean to move into the interior of Canada. Uh, so 
it has those fond memories attached for it. And the book that I want to pair this mug with is Rag and Bone by Lisa Woolett. This is a book that I read for Nonfiction November last year, and it's all about what this woman finds while beachcombing and mudlarking. So some of the chapters are discussing her finds uh, in the River Thames, and then the second half of the book is really about what she finds on the coast of the UK. And so the, just the layout of this mug kind of looked like we were beachcombing, like we found all of these shells, so that is what made me think of Rag and Bone. And the very end of Rag and Bone has a ton of pictures of this author's finds kind of laid out in a flat lay style that really reminded me of this mug. Then the next mug in my collection is my Keep Calm and Carry On British flag uh, propaganda mug with the Keep Calm down the handle. This is obviously based off of the famous uh, World War II propaganda poster Keep Calm and Carry On. So of course I had to pair this with some World War II era historical fiction and I'm throwing it back to one of my all-time uh, favorite series from my childhood and that is the Guest of War trilogy by Canadian author Kit Pearson. This trilogy of books follows a brother and sister Nora and Gavin and they were what is called British guest children which were uh, child war evacuees that were sent by their parents from uh, Britain to Canada. I think in a lot of historical fiction it's uh, kind of well known and well discussed that it was typical to send children from London into the countryside but there was also I think just over 5,000 children who were sent um, all the way to Canada to host families here uh, to avoid the conflict. And so these books start off just before the Blitz in London and we see through these children's eyes uh, kind of the tension that's building in their country and in their communities and the difficult decision that their parents are having to make about how best to keep them safe. And then the majority of the three books is really about uh, Nora adjusting to life in Canada, uh, struggling with homesickness, uh, hearing all the bad news coming back from home, worrying about her parents and her family and friends. And then by the third book, when the war is over, uh, kind of all the emotions that come up with them returning to the UK back to parents that they haven't seen in a long, long time. The younger brother Gavin can hardly even remember his life before the war and so we're kind of watching them try to readjust um, to what life would be like upon their return to the UK. So I think that that story and uh, the experiences of British guest children in Canada really uh, epitomizes the keep calm and carry on message. So I think those three books are the perfect pairing for this mug and now I kind of want to go back and reread that trilogy because it's probably been 15 or 20 years since I last read them. Then my next mug is this Tudor mug. So we have Henry VIII and he's surrounded by his six wives. And this is one of those uh, disappearing mugs where when you add hot water, the wives' heads disappear, which is very apropos. This is a mug that my sister actually got me as a Christmas present because she knows how much I love reading uh, Tudor era fiction and love that time period in British history. And the obvious pairing for this mug is Philippa Gregory's uh, Tudor Court series, but the book that I want to talk about particularly is The King's Curse by Philippa Gregory. This is kind of a unique book in her series because a lot of the other books in her Tudor Court series feature around one of the six wives and is kind of told from their perspective. But this book is told from the perspective of Margaret Pohl, who was uh, a lady-in-waiting to Catherine of Aragon and was also a cousin to Henry VIII's mother, Elizabeth of York. So as kind of a royal cousin, someone who carries York blood, she was seen as a threat during um, Henry VII and Henry VIII's reign. And so as Henry VIII and his relationship with Catherine of Aragon and Anne Boleyn grows more and more complicated, Margaret Pohl is torn between her allegiance to the crown, her allegiance to uh, the woman she's served for many years, to her royal blood versus her faith. And we really see, I think, how incredibly toxic it would have been to have to live in the Tudor era court and how complicated the decisions people are having to make about how to show their loyalty and how to remain true to themselves at the same time. And then my final mug is this adorable little blue cable knit mug. I actually have a set of four of these. 
I actually got these in Zambia one of the times that I was visiting my husband before his uh, visa was approved to immigrate to Canada. So when I saw these at the local grocery store in Zambia, I scooped them right up because not only are they blue, my favorite color, but they also have a great knitting motif and they matched my current dish set. So it was uh, positively providential that I should scoop these up. So for this mug, because it has that cozy winter vibe to it, I'm going to choose uh, the Little Book of Huga, The Danish Way to Live Well by Mike Wiking. This is one of those books that came out uh, during the height of the Huga craze a few years ago and I actually did really enjoy it and gathered some tips for how to make my winter living cozy uh, and a lot of those tips feature around uh, knitwear, warm socks, candles, hot beverages. So I think this book not only aesthetically the cover really matches with the mug because of all the blues but also in theme it's a great fit. So I hope you enjoyed this little peek into my mug collection and maybe gained some new book recommendations as well. Until next time, enjoy wandering through the pages of a good book. Bye.